This film is dedicated to Delphine Red Cloud Brown, who passed away on July 1st, 2010, at the age of 78. In Pine Ridge, South Dakota, tucked away on the western side, lies a humble dwelling that has ties to the earliest days of the reservation and one of its most recognizable leaders, Chief Red Cloud. Meet Delphine Red Cloud Brown, a Lakota elder who is descended from the chief and lives just a few feet from where the United States government built a two-story clapboard house over a hundred years ago. The chief had a house built. It was standing right there where you see that monument. And when they tore it down, my dad, they told him to take the lumber, his sisters, uh, Susanna and uh, Lucy, take the lumber and build a house. It was still good lumber. So they brought it and they built this this house for him with the with, uh, original. In this house is from the original chief's house. They used to call it the chief's house. Just the top part and it was built into a basement so the top part is what they use the lumber for. Aside from her home, Delphine also possesses a great knowledge that has been handed down throughout time including the story of how her mother became united with the Red Cloud family. She said one day, uh, three or four wagons pulled up with horses and all that goods, and they came after her. They wanted her to marry, marry Jim, Jack's oldest. She was a white bear, but her family, her mother came from her mother's Jenny, but Jenny's mother came from the chief American horse. And that's where this relationship came together with the, the chiefs, I guess, back then. They got her into the Red Cloud family. So, <laughs> so the family, she really didn't know, she said, she was they came after her and took her home. So that's, she said that's what was a real Indian, Indian marriage. It was real scary because she didn't know him. She didn't know the family. And so they didn't, she didn't know where they were taking her. And actually she said this is somewhere in this area is where they, they brought, brought her back. And that's where they, they got married, I guess, and then they had a three-day celebration. She said they had dinner and danced and all that. She said, so, she said that's where I actually got acquainted with him, but we still sat and looked at each other, she said. <laughs> Delphine passes down the stories told to her, and this sharing of history from person to person, establishes a unique human connectivity. Sometimes this oral history provides information not found in the history books. One of my grandmas would tell us a story about the little big horn. She said she was there. And her husband and his two brothers were in that battle. And when it was over, with they went looking for their, their, uh, the, uh, one brother returned, but two did her husband and one. So she said, we went back over there and she said, we went looking for our families and people were taking their dead home. And she said, we went along looking and there's some of those guys laying their blue eyes looking at us, oh, oh, oh. And she said, we just take our, and we just knock them in the head, she said. <laughs> That's what she used to tell us. I said, we'd tell her, Grandma, did you really? Yeah, she said, we were mad, she said. 
we were mad, so she said, and then she said, they lay there, and, oh, 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 but she said, we knock them in the head, and go on, she said. <laughs> that's, that's what I always remember, clearly. <laughs> the timbers that once sheltered Chief Red Cloud now shelter Delphine. And the history that she tells is just one of the many that can be found on the Great Lakota Nation.